1997, Leonardo DiCaprio had one of his best ever acting performances in Titanic when he portrayed Jack Dawson, a young man who fell in love with a beautiful woman on board a cruise ship. Ever since the first day I saw that movie, I have endlessly imagined myself on a cruise ship with the possibility of finding love at sea just like Jack did. Even though I was fully aware things didn't particularly end very well for him. I wasn't certain if it was the concept of life at sea that fascinated me or the beautiful display of unconditional love by Jack towards Rose, a character portrayed by Kate Whistlet that inspired me to want a glimpse of that life. But I finally got the opportunity 27 years after the Titanic was first released. If this is your first time of seeing this very cute face of mine, my name is Suleiman Anero and in this video, I'm going to show you how I lived my life for a few days as Jack aboard a Royal Caribbean cruise ship, the Liberty of the Seas. And I'm glad to inform you that things ended far better for me than it did for the real Jack Dawson because I went to sea with my own rose and of course, our little offsprings. Sit back and relax as I show you my first ever experience of being on a cruise ship with my family, hoping it motivates and inspires you to consider going on a cruise ship one day if it is something you have never done before. If you watch to the end of this video, I will be providing a price breakdown of how much everything costs just to help you prepare for your own trip. Please hit that subscribe button right now and enjoy our little adventure at sea with me. Let's go guys. This journey began from Ottawa in Canada, from where we flew to Fort Lauderdale in the United States on the day of the cruise. This is definitely not the best thing to do when embarking on a cruise, but I was making this trip on a very tight budget, so I had to take some risks in order to save costs, and I'm glad it paid off. We left for the airport very early and flew the 6 a.m. Air Canada flight to the U.S. The flight was smooth and it was manned by an excellent crew. We were treated very nicely and even had the chance to visit the cockpit for an unforgettable experience. Special shout out to Air Canada, I strongly, strongly recommend this airline. On arrival in the US at about 10 a.m., we waited at the airport for some time because we were not due to board the ship until around noon and I was super glad I had a toddler leash for my super active little champ. I strongly recommend having this with you when traveling with kids that are super active. We eventually got a taxi from the airport to the Royal Caribbean ship terminal at Fort Lauderdale to board the ship. We dropped our bags at the entrance and provided our room details for delivery. As a word of advice, ensure you have every essential things you need to use frequently in your handbag because the check-in bags will be brought to your room very much later in the day after the ship has sailed. Prior to arrival, I had done online check-in so the physical check-in was very smooth and straightforward. All we needed to do was show our passports, take some photos and we were good to go. I was finally going to experience the life on board a cruise ship. It's interesting going on a cruise ship with the family. We are looking forward to seeing how this experience would um, pan out. I am excited and we'll be sharing all of our experiences with you. My family, Kalimat, Camille and Kaira. Everyone is excited. Camille, are you excited? Yeah! Good boy! Upon stepping on the ship, we were treated to a safety briefing on what to do in the event of an emergency before we went to our stateroom cabin. The room was not lavish, but it was just perfect for us. I had opted for a room with a balcony because I wanted the full experience of the cruise. I wanted to watch the sunrise and the sunset. I wanted to see the ocean tides and the waves. I wanted to appreciate the universe in the perfect way God had created it and I am grateful I did. It had been a very long day and it was only befitting to end things with food and the food was good. Exploration of the ship begins tomorrow. For now, we sleep. End of day one. 
Day two began with views of the sunset. I had looked forward to it even before boarding the ship and I got a feeling of fulfillment just being able to share that moment in time with family. We went out for breakfast at the main dining hall. The rest of the day was basically used to explore the length and breadth of the ship. From the bow to the stern and from the port side to the starboard side, the ship was massive. As I walked around, I saw people of different ages trying out their golf skills at the Liberty Dunes and I had some fun watching them. <laughs> there you go, there you go. Just, just, just put it in there anyway. Just put it in there anyway. <laughs> there you go, he got this. This is par five. You got it, you got it. There you go. Oh! <laughs> Come on. He back in the weeds again. <laughs> there we go. Oh, he's oh, doing, he's doing, be doing this. Damn. <laughs> 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 Don't miss that. Oh, he's scooting it in. <laughs> oh. <laughs> there were people everywhere. There were people in the various pools. There were people jogging on the tracks. There were people climbing rocks. And there were people on the Flow Rider Surfing Simulator. This one seriously caught my attention and I was certain I was going to try it out before disembarking this ship. There were lots of activities happening everywhere and no one was left out. The ship felt like one big massive neighborhood floating on water. Well, with its ability to accommodate nearly 6,000 guests and crew, the ship is definitely a neighborhood. We did some more exploration before retiring to our cabin. We were soon back at the main dining hall in the evening and everywhere looked stunning. The dinner was fantastic and fabulous. We did some more exploration after dinner within the promenade and called it quits for day two. Day 3 was all about the adventures. We started with rock climbing and I successfully made my way to the very top. I'm not going to lie, the feeling was ecstatic. Don't to this is all you need. I can't say the same about my rose when it was her time to climb, but whether she got to the top or not, it's the effort that actually counts. Keep going! I just hope we won't ever need her rock climbing skills in real life to survive. I decided to give the flow rider a try and I must admit that it was not as easy as I thought. I had wondered the previous day why many people could not do something as basic as surfing on a simulator but I soon discovered execution is entirely different from strategy. After two failed attempts to kneel on the surfing pad, I didn't need a fortune teller to advise me that surfing isn't for me. I advised myself and chose to spend what was left of the day bonding with my family. It was a beautiful third day and I ended it going outside to see if there were any ships nearby. Luckily, the lights from the only ship I could see within several mile radius stood out from the darkness of the night at sea. This marks the end of day three. Day four was a special day as we stepped out of the ship onto a Caribbean island and the Bahamas was gracious enough to be hosting us for the entire day. It was a very beautiful day with awesome weather until the weather wasn't awesome anymore. While the weather was still great, we got out of the ship in Nassau, the capital of the Bahamas, and explored the city as best as time and weather permitted us to. I'll be making a short standalone video detailing our day on land in the Bahamas. Please keep an eye out for that video 
and i believe subscribing to the channel is one way to ensure you don't miss out If you have watched up to this point and you have enjoyed the video so far, why don't you click that like button? Don't be stingy fam. Give this video a like and subscribe to the channel. Anyway, we got back to the ship in one piece and on time while it was still raining cats and dog in Nassau. Mind you, the ship waits for no one when it's sailing time. So if you are late and you are left behind, you will bear all the expenses and inconveniences from your pockets to get back to wherever you are supposed to be. Funny, but not funny. We had our final dinner in the main dining hall and the crew gave us a performance to the applause of everyone. That marked the end of day four. The next morning, we had breakfast at the Winjama and the crew also got a standing ovation for service well delivered throughout our time on board the Liberty of the Seas. The ship arrived back at Fort Lauderdale right on time and we checked out in style. I promised at the beginning that I was going to give a cost breakdown at the end and I'm here to keep that promise. The cost of the cruise for my entire family was 1,200 Canadian dollars. And this was relatively cheap because I booked well ahead. But this cost was mainly for the two adults in the group because the children were basically free of charge. I think we paid something very small that contributed to the 1,200 Canadian dollars. While on board the ship, we paid for internet access for two devices and that was about 200 or 250 dollars, US dollars, I believe. I can't be so sure right now, but it was super, super expensive to have internet access on board the ship. The return ticket from Canada to the US from Air Canada was around 1,000 Canadian dollars. For the entire trip, I opted not to pay for any insurance or use any agents because I was on a very tight budget. For a rough estimate, I would say what I spent on that trip was around 2,000 US dollars or 2,800 Canadian dollars. This is where we bring this video to a close. I'd like to specially thank you for watching and sharing in my four days of playing Jack Dawson from the Titanic. I appreciate all your support for this channel and I hope you have subscribed, you have liked this video and you are willing to share it with your friends. So till I see you in the very next video, it is peace and of course, lots of love. Catch ya. Bye for now, guys.